five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is the Ramble. I am Alex. And we're coming to you from the most infected, infected city in the world. Right? Right. Ladies and gentlemen, out to California, out to San Francisco, out to a man who feels like he's living in a jail cell during this duration of this thing that's going on. It's Larry Bubbles Brown. How you holding up, Larry? <laughs> How are you doing, Alex? I was just thinking that you said a jail cell. I, I, during this uh, uh, nightmare, I realized I would not do well in prison. I don't know about you, but uh, maybe, maybe prison is cruel and unusual punishment. Well, I do great in prison because I'm not as pretty as you are. <laughs> yes, I'm considered good looking by men in prison. Yeah, yeah. I, I well, not, I wouldn't do good in prison either. I mean, you know, I mean, something. Well, I, you know, if it were like one of those federal minimum security prisons, I suppose I could hack it. You know, but a cell like in San Quentin, forget it. You know. Most of the uh, people on death row, you're in a, uh, I think it's like a four by 12 foot cell. Well, I had a guy I knew in on death row, and he said it was something like his, he was very tall, and he said his feet stuck out through the bars Jesus. when he slept, yeah. So, and they keep them in there 23, they, they're out, allowed out for an hour, and they're in there 23 hours a day. Yeah. Um, so... Most of them literally go insane after a few years. Well, I mean, I can't imagine, you know, li living under those circumstances. And I think, I don't know why somebody hasn't argued that it's inhumane. I mean, yes, okay, the guy's in there for murder. He's in there on death row because they're going to execute him, which in California they never get around to doing. Uh, and uh, you're in there, as you say, 23 hours a day. And um, you know why you're gonna you're gonna execute the guy? Why do you have to make him have a living death while he's there? Yeah. Why why do you have to make him welcome death? You know what I would do? I always suggest. Yeah, I'd be I'd be I think the death penalty is actually more humane than that. Well, what I would do, okay, this is just my take on it. I don't know if you would agree, but if we put somebody on death row. I think death row should have a great buffet, you know, uh, lots of television, everything you want, Netflix, the whole thing. I think they should let you out maybe, <clears throat> oh, I don't know, 23 hours a day to go run in fields, okay? So that when you're finally executed, you're actually going to feel you're missing something. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. But when you stick a guy in a cell that's four by 12 or something like that, and uh, you put them in there for like uh, 22, 23 hours a day, uh, by the time you execute them, it's a blessed relief. Oh, sure. Remember, uh, our, the, you know how they do it in Japan. How, how's that? Uh, when you're on death row in Japan, they don't tell you the day you're going to be executed, so you think it could be any morning you wake up. Oh, that's great. <laughs> you like that? Well, I don't know, but is, is, is that more in you, is that inhumane or is it more humane than have, telling somebody you're dying on Wednesday? I think in Japan you might be freaking out, oh, God, tomorrow's it. Yeah, but they, they just don't tell you when, huh? They, don't, they just come up with the door, this is it. <laughs> Do they, I didn't know they had a death penalty in Japan. They do. Right? They just use it recently. It's very rare, but that's how they do it. And, uh, what is the form of execution in Japan? Um, I, I don't know how, how they do it there, because I, I just read about this guy that just got the death penalty fairly recently, and yeah, they, 
Like, what country did I hear that the form of death penalty was getting you married? (laughs) (laughs) Or sending you to Kaiser. (laughs) Sending you to Kaiser. (laughs) Another another senseless Kaiser joke. Remember remember Warren Thomas' joke about the the last meal on death row? He said he just eat everything he could. So when he died, he'd shit all over, and they had to <laughs> spend days to clean it up. <laughs> yes, right. Do you know it used to be that they had that you could make, you can make a request for your last meal? They they you, you, you still get that? I think you get anything you want. You know. Oh really? You still do? Yeah. Oh. My friend Patrick McDermott said I would get my last meal to go. <laughs> oh okay, fine. <laughs> that, that makes sense. No, uh, what would you, what would you have for your last meal? Uh, well, I get a real Coke, not a Diet Coke. Yeah. Uh, probably a veggie burger and fries. Really? Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing special. You, you want to die rather in a mediocre way, right? Yeah. You really gonna feel like my life, of course. When I, do you when do you do you really feel like you're gonna want to eat something when the day you're gonna die? <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been on a diet for so long. I think I probably get a hot fudge sundae. Uh, oh, those are good. I haven't had one of those in years. Maybe one of those. Yeah, yeah. a hot fudge sundae, and uh, I would get. Oh, I would get ribs. Ribs would be my food of choice. But the trouble with ribs is I have ribs, and then I get I have IBS, so I get the trots the next day. And every time I get it, I go, I go, this is terrible, but it was worth it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. That's how I feel about ribs. So I love I love my pork ribs. By the way, never had ribs. Never had them. Mm, never pork ribs. Though. Never por- beef ribs though. I think beef ribs are a total waste. You know, if you're going to do it, do it anti-kosher. You know, you've never had maybe ribs? Try, you've never maybe had a ribs. bat. A bat. I, I'd have a bat yeah. and then breathe on everybody. Yeah. Uh, what, 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 what? Why, why? You never had ribs? No. Just the thought of gnawing on a bone seems a little disgusting to me. But Really? Are you, are you vegetarian? Uh, I was for three years. Now I still, I, I shun red meat, but I do uh, eat uh, turkey burgers. Oh, oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. You know, because I, uh, uh, you know, I, oh, I, 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 I maybe thought you weren't necessarily a vegetarian, and I guess you're not at no. this point. But uh, I just think that being a vegetarian is... Denying yourself one of the fine pleasures in life, which is gnawing on animal flesh. <laughs> you know? But don't you feel sorry for the animals? I don't know them. You know, I, I was mentioning to Marjorie the other night that there was a movie that I saw years ago called The Culpepper Cattle Company, and it's about a kid who meets up with a bunch of cowboys who are herding cows so he joins them on the on the on the what do you call it the uh uh the herd or whatever they call it thing where they sent take the animals and take them out to uh send them to St. Louis or whatever and uh he's standing there with the guy and he's got a horse and he said what's the name of your horse and the guy said kid he doesn't have a name and the kid says why doesn't he have a name he says you never name anything you might have to eat someday. <laughs> That's in the movie? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's hilarious. And I've always remembered that line because it's true. You never, like, if, if uh, 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 the reason it came up is Marjorie mentioned that she had a girlfriend who had a pet chicken. And then she came home one night and they were having chicken dinner and they didn't have the heart to tell her they cooked the chicken. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> She, she, they had given it to her as a chick, and of course it grew up didn't do a chicken. And they said, "Hey, it's time to eat it," you know. So, uh, uh, you know, you, so, so then I told her the story about you never name something you might have to eat someday. But it's true, you know. So uh, it's uh, it's pretty pretty uh, pretty pretty cool. But 
Anyway, we're living in these in these times that I I honestly think that this is every science fiction movie I ever saw about absolutely doomsday it's the war of the worlds. It, well, in War of the Worlds, we had aliens attacking us, but in this case, I'm thinking more like Last Man on Earth with Charlton Heston. Uh, you know, where you, you, you it's, it's just the whole world's gone into chaos. You know, and nothing's left except you and the and the and the people who were left have turned into zombies, basically. Uh, I I see that coming. You know, I mean, I see that a pandemic. A, a really, really bad pandemic, and this is bad enough. And I'm talking about a really bad pandemic. Could wipe out the entire you know, population of the world, and in the meantime, while it's it's getting bad, there is this, uh, the you know, this absolute breakdown of society. Now we're not we don't have a breakdown of society now, but if this goes on for too long, it's going to start happening. You know, it's, it's interesting that our society started to break down as technology took off. Well, yet the technology right now is what's saving us. Not saving you, but it's saving the rest of us. <laughs> uh, no, because grandma can talk to the kids because she can't go over and see them on Sunday. You know, uh, once she learns how to operate uh, FaceTime, you know, Um uh, it it's allowed us to com, com, continue communication. Marjorie goes to work every day. She's got a computer over here. It's linked up to her computer at work, and uh, she's uh, every day she's doing her job. She's working from home. We couldn't have done that without technology, you know. So if if this kind of thing was going to happen, uh, now is maybe the best time for it to happen. And this is just a small epidemic pandemic. Uh, this is this may be small compared to what could come. Yeah, and and we should be ready for it. We should have everything in place that if another pandemic comes along, we're not going to have the devastation that we have now. Um, but uh, you know, as long as you got people saying, "Oh, we can't reopen because uh, we no, we we, we got to reopen because the economy is falling apart." Well, the economy is going to fall apart. Anyway, if everybody's dying like crazy, you know, so take your choice. Human life over the over the economy, I'll take human life every day, every time, you know. Well, maybe uh, maybe nature is trying to weed out our, our overpopulation. Well, what's this, what's this going to do to our social ethic? I mean, do you think really there are going to be comedy clubs anymore? It's going to be a while before our our sporting events. Uh, when when will people want to go to a packed room? Exactly. I think movie theaters are through. In fact, I just saw a thing where where the movie theaters, uh, where the movie companies are making more money off of video on demand than they would have made if the movie had been in the theater. So they're beginning to see a new form of distribution that excludes the motion picture theater. So, you know. Well, that would be a shame. It would be a shame, but then would it be? You know, they charge so much for them now, and, uh, you know, there's always somebody kicking the seat in back of you, and then you've wound up paying 20 bucks to go see a picture that sucks, and you didn't know it sucked before you paid the 20. <laughs> they get their 20, you know, they don't take their 20 bucks after the picture is over and say, well, if you liked it, it's 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. If that were the case, they'd be making more better movies. You know, so, I mean, it's just it. Uh, I think our whole society will change. This, we're not changing after we're, we're up for a complete change after this. Um, and and how it's going to manifest itself, I have no idea. But I don't know how trusting people will be of crowds anymore. Yeah, baseball is talking about playing games in empty stadiums this summer. Yeah, or. If they go back, they're going to have to, like, cut the amount of seating down. They can't yeah. afford to do that. That's going to cost them money. Movie theaters will have to put seats further apart. That will cost them money. So, you know, I mean, uh, uh, nothing's going to be the same as it was. 
uh, because we've uh, and, and and people are also starting to learn whole new paradigms of, of the ways of acting. You sit home, you watch a movie on Netflix. You don't go to a movie theater to see it. You know, so it, it's it's really. Ah. It's a it's mess. Some, it's some a mess. of those, those old theaters that were so majestic, some of them. Like Bubbles Brown used to say, we're all going to die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I was right. I was right. <laughs> Life is hell. <laughs> True. Yeah, kiss your ass goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, hey, listen, we've run out of time again. Well, yeah, and yeah, literally. I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks if I'm still alive and you're still alive. If we're still alive, we'll do this again. Yeah, you, you wrote me a day ahead of time and said, we are seeing each other Tuesday, aren't we? Right. You, you know, and, uh, you know, if you don't hear from me, I'm dead. And if I don't hear from you, you're dead. Okay? Otherwise, right. we'll talk to two live human beings in a couple of weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, you got it. well, he'll be on next week, actually, if you're listening to this. Larry, Bubbles, Brown. Thank you very much, Larry. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And there's Larry, Bubbles, Brown. We love Larry. Don't we love Larry? We lo- How much do we love Larry? Oh, we love Larry a lot, okay? And we'll have him on again next week. That one, by the way, that interview was from a couple of weeks ago because every time I was going to run it, something came up and I had to go to that rather than that interview. So then I did an interview with him last week, and so it was kind of very current. I played it on that day. So this one was like about, I think it was done on the 14th of the month or something like that. Anyway. Anyway, 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 anyway. Uh, You know, we do it this time every night. I hope there's a day when we don't have to do this anymore. We go to the map. Oops, that's not the map. It's stupid. I didn't want that. I want this. There we go. There's the map, folks. Da 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 da. And guess what it says? In the world, totally confirmed. These are confirmed now. This is not necessarily a correct number, but so it could go well over four million. But right now we're at three million. 845,607 cases in the world with 269,564 people who are no longer on this planet. They are under this planet. Or maybe they've been turned into crispy critters, which is what my wife wants to do to me when I go. That's what I have to look forward to, right? Next big operations, going into the furnace and getting singed. Anyway... Uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's amazing that we have that many deaths. Uh, this is worldwide. Now, they're starting to say that there are some more cases in Russia. As you can see, if I, if I bring that up, it says, in Russia, confirmed uh, 177,160, death 1,625. Now, uh, we don't know whether we believe that or not, but they're now starting to, oh, let me, Make this smaller again. Uh, there, uh, there, there is a question as to whether that's correct. Okay, the the Chinese numbers also, eh, we don't know that they're correct. Uh, here in the U.S., uh, let's go to the U.S. number. Um, total confirmed one million two hundred fifty-seven thousand twenty-three, but. In the deaths, forget about this global deaths. I don't know why it says global deaths up there, but this is the deaths in the United States. 75,662. Okay. Huh? How about that? Hmm. That's not good. This New York number that's here, uh, I think this is for all of the state of New York, is 26,144. I think that may be correct, but New York City is somewhere around 19,000 deaths so far. Uh, the death rate in New York City uh, went down by about two or three people today. Uh, I think it was, uh, I can't remember what it was yesterday, but it's down around 230 which is an improvement, but it kind of hasn't moved 
very much in the last couple of days. And uh, we'd like to see that go down. I'd like to see that go up to under 100. I would like to see it go down to zero. There are some countries now that are reporting zero. South Korea says it's reporting zero, but who knows? Um, Spain is, uh, has got problems, too. Um, they're at 26,070 uh, deaths. Um, far less than us, but in percentage of population, uh, not good, because out of the 221,447, 26,070, about roughly 10%, are dying. Italy, has, it supposedly, has calmed down. They've kind of let people go out again. But they, 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 they're at 29,958 dead and uh, two, 215,858 uh, people uh, in a lot of trouble. Uh, Russia, supposedly Russia, has, has jumped into a lead of about fifth place, but it, uh, here it is. Here we go. See, here's Russia. Russia didn't come up at this point la in, in a while before, but now, hold on a second. Let me bring up Russia. 177,160. Um, that can't be right on the deaths, uh, but uh, we have uh, in, let's see here. Where is it? Russia, 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 Russia. Where are the deaths? I don't see them here. This is very, for some reason, this thing, they've changed this map, and it, it doesn't work exactly like we like it. U.S., by the way, if you look, here's the, here's the thing to look at. See this? Still going up. Now, New York is coming down, but the rest of the country is going up. So uh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Anyway. Uh, I, I think that's enough depression for tonight. I think we can get away from the map. <laughs> it's not, uh, it's not, an imp it, it, if we keep looking at the map, it's just going to depress us. And we don't want to do that now, do we? Okay. All right, let me open up the uh, Skype lines. Again, you know, I always have to wait to open up the Skype lines because um, there's a problem with people who, once they see that the, that I'm, uh, I, I have the active light on, okay, uh, there it is, it's on now, and when I don't have it on, they might still call, and if they still call, it will still ring, and I don't want it to ring while I'm trying to do a, a show. Uh, here he comes, first guy, every night, man, he is just so ready for us. Now he wants he wants his spot. Okay, <laughs> there he is, folks. Brian Neary. There you go, Brian. And here comes Hello. Phil Meyer. Let me see where he he last night he was in fourth place, but no, he's not going to be outdone by Brian Neary, and Charlie Wallace. There we go with Charlie. I never beat Neary to the punch. You never beat Neary. No, let me let me put you in the uh, in the, in a spot here. So that I can, uh, uh, because you you usually were coming in. F oh wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me see here. Is Jeff Jeff Zeller did he come in in the second spot last night? No, he didn't. No, I mean, who came in? Oh, Rob Alfano came in the second spot last night. Okay, well let me see here. Scuba diver goes in there, and uh, there we go. There's uh, Phil Meyer. God, I'm getting to be a real pro at this. You know, I'm not letting it, it daunt me. That terribly. Um, I'm just happy to be able to log on now. So, <laughs> what, what was that? Were you, were you uh, what we would call uh, impaired that way? Yeah, yeah. I, I kept trying to call through a different way or something, and then I went on the GabNet Live and I tried to click onto that thing, and it rang and rang, and you were probably yelling at me saying someone's trying to call through and they don't know what they're doing. So, Phil walked me through it. Last night I was listening to Damien's show, and, and he was saying that, uh, oh, well, we use Skype. I don't know why we're still using Skype. And I'm going, because if you used Zoom, you somehow would have to be able to get that address out somewhere. You'd have to put it on your Facebook page or somewhere. Here I just say GabNet Live, and if you know how to run Skype, you just type in GabNet Live, and you get here. Now, yeah. I, I love Damien. But isn't it just his mom and and one other caller? 
Uh, yeah, usually. And I wish more people would call him, but you don't know when his show is being done anymore. Sometimes he does it on Saturday. Sometimes he does it on Monday. You know. Well, he would be better off using Zoom because he'd put out a, 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 a call to action and people would call. No, no, but you put out a call to action, but you have to somehow get them that address that Zoom uses for you to get on. Well, you know, his mother knows where he lives. No, I, I know, but I'm saying for other people. Like, for instance, if, if, if he were to go on and say, okay, Zoom me, would you know where to get his Zoom no. address? No. 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 No, you'd so, have to send me a link. Well, you, you don't have to do that. What I do is I, what I did the other day when I did a special show. Oh, you didn't know about that, did you, Phil? Uh, we did it. Well, no, a, but if I did, I wouldn't have called anyway. We did a special show in which we used Zoom. And did it on Facebook, and we I did it at like four in the afternoon. Charlie was there, and yeah. I on my on the Facebook page I simply put the link, okay, mm -hmm. and then it was easy for people to do. But absent that, you know, it, it's much easier just to say Gabnet Live and hope people know how to use Skype. It's a little more difficult for people like Jeff. Uh, <laughs> Alex, <laughs> it would have to mean that I look at your Facebook page to see the link. Uh, oh, you know. look at it a lot because you keep sending me all this fucking shit. No, and that's not on your Facebook page. That's on Messenger. Uh, uh, no, I, I hate that stuff. You, you don't I just mess hate it. I hate it. I'll send it by carrier pigeon next time. Yeah, next time, shove it up your ass and then blow it out your ass. I, it disproves your, uh, your stuff. Hey, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear, uh, uh, you know, what you think about uh, that FBI investigation. Uh, that's going on uh, where they've disproved that uh, who is a general uh, now all of a sudden I had a senior brain fart mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know the, the Kelly that, uh, uh, Kelly yeah uh, is it Kelly that yeah, they got yeah. to admit mm -hmm. uh, wrongdoing oh okay and, uh, it's uh, about Flynn? Flynn, Flynn, that's it. Flynn Flynn and now all of a sudden uh, you know everybody that had convicted him and uh, no, wait a minute, and wait a minute. You, you, he, you're getting this all hey. wrong but if you want if if you want to pass out bad information, go right ahead, Phil. I'm passing out the information that uh, you know the president of the United States and uh, the people on Fox News are giving me, which is the truth. On to begin this one, with, to begin oh, with, to begin with, nobody else wants to, to admit that. To wrong. begin with, as opposed to our president, um, uh, our former president, never had anything to do with it. Okay, had to do with this. All he did was warn Trump. When he was coming into office and he was debriefing him, wait a minute, let me finish. Yeah. Told him, watch out for Flynn. Okay, yeah. we think there may be something going on there. That's all he ever did. He never he never started an investigation against Flynn. Nothing like that. Okay. No, well, wait a minute, question. let me finish. Let me finish. Yeah. Secondly, Flynn admitted guilt. He pleaded Nolo Contendere B really pleaded guilty, right? You know why? But no, wait a minute. Let me finish. He no, pleaded guilty. The pe person that let him off is the Justice Department, not the FBI. No, it was the FBI that staged a sham investigation. No, that isn't what is being claimed. Did you see the notes? That, that is that not being claimed. That is not being claimed. Uh, it is. It's what's uh, getting his uh, uh, his um, uh, not convict. Is it a conviction or did he just uh, a conviction because he confessed? Okay. He made a plea. Conviction expunged. Uh, and if you take five minutes, expunged. To it, 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 it was expunged <laughs> by a Trump toady, who's the head uh, of the Justice uh, Department, uh, Phil. And and the FBI agent that wrote down in the notes. You know, uh, to to crucify this guy, you know, uh, and, and they made up the story. Uh, the only thing that they said was, this is the reason they said that they they did they did away with his conviction. Okay, is the Justice Department under what's his name, asshole Bill Barr, B B Barr um, uh, this who is at at Trump's bidding and would give him a blowjob if Trump asked. Um, uh, decided that the he was convicted for um, um, uh, dealing with a foreign entity, 
But the they low proved. Count. Wait a minute. They. That, but according to the Justice Department, he didn't do anything that jeopardized the country. Therefore, they were exp they were doing away with the conviction. No, uh, it, basically, it was a pardon from Trump. Wasn't he? Well, no. It's, it was uh, a pardon. It was a pardon from a down. de facto pardon Comey. from Trump. Comey was uh, complicit in this, and I think that what's going to happen is Comey is going to is going to have some backlash on this. Comey wasn't complicit in anything here, Phil. Yeah, because he prosecuted in. in uh, where are you hearing this bullshit? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Where are you? Well, no, I'm asking you for your source. Uh, uh, it's mostly Fox. <laughs> Uh, that's where I'm going to get the the truth. Um, oh, really? Trump yeah. doesn't think so. He hates Fox these days. Well, he may uh, hate it, but I don't. Oh, and, you know, and I'm I'm happy about. So if it. if if Fox starts turning on Trump and starts telling their new version of the truth, you're going to believe Fox then, right? Well, so far, you know, the people that are on there, I I believe, and that's. Uh, you know, Hannity and uh, oh, uh, Ingram. Well, I mean, you don't uh, watch Hannity on this show every night. Have much more credibility than somebody like a Maddow or, or that Don Lemon piece of garbage. You know, you don't. especially some of our uh, people in Congress, like Schiff. Gee, you don't I mean, like women and black people, huh? Is that what it's all about? Schiff? No, you. Oh, I, what are you saying? I don't like black well, Because people? the two people you went after were a woman and a black guy. A gay woman and a black guy. Oh, okay. Then a gay woman and a black guy. So you don't like yeah. gays, women, or black guys. Yeah, I don't like anybody. I don't like Jews. <laughs> well, there are a lot of people that don't, and that's because they met you. Mm. Hey, uh, not, not to change the subject, but you know... But you're going to change the subject, aren't you? I never commend Jeff. You know, I've mentioned this earlier to him that uh, he has really shown that, that he's a 21st century man by taking on his wife's last name. Now, he's either wanted by the FBI or the fact that he's no longer Jeff Stein and he's now Jeff Zeller uh, <laughs> you know, is, is a very, you know, a very upstanding thing to do. And, you know, I'm, I'm proud of you, Jeff. You, you could be uh, Phil Zeller also. Yeah, you else? want it? <laughs> <laughs> Phil Zeller. Yeah, okay. Yeah. If I break the law, my new name is Phil Zeller. <laughs> okay. I've had three names. Yeah. Oh, on. Yeah, I've had three names. So my I, original uh, name, I was born mm -hmm. Brian Joseph Stiff. S T I F F. Oh, that's so a name you didn't want to you didn't want to go with, right? And the porn, right. I would have been good. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> And then uh, my mom got divorced when I was like three years old. She got remarried, so I took over his name, and oh, wow. I changed my middle name to Brian Alfred Stevenson. Mm -hmm. And then that sort of fell through, and I really wanted to go back to our maiden the maiden name. That's why I went back to Neary, so Brian Alfred Neary. So yeah, but you have every once in a while I get something from like IRS or something from Brian Joseph Stiff, and they still let me cash it. Weird. Yeah. Well, I, what, what's your nickname? You got a nickname, Brian. Oh, Brian Bravo. Brian Bravo, that's it. Yeah, now, that, that's that's Butch. <laughs> Good name. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but uh, you know, it, it's um, um, what, 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 what something happened today. What 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 did what did asshole do today? The, the, the Charlie didn't did the asshole do something today that was? I don't know. I wasn't watching the news today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he, um, you know, uh, oh, oh, I know what it is. Uh, Mr. I won't wear a mask. Yes. Okay. Turns out the guy who serves him dinner, Stewart at the White House, came down with COVID. Oh. <laughs> so, and, and he says, but I'm not worried because I took a test and I don't have it. No, you don't know your, you don't listen to the doctors. You don't listen to the information you get. Just put your <laughs> hand down, Phil. You don't listen to your doctors. You don't listen to the people you should be listening to. Just mm. because you didn't test for it doesn't mean you don't have it. It just means that it hasn't come to a point like 14 days later where it <laughs> shows up on a test. You could have very well given it to all those Republicans down in Arizona when Arizona. you were shaking hands with them. And I, quite frankly, I hope 
Trump gets it. I hope all those Republicans down there got it. And we can see that the president can't even take the advice of his own people. I, and his I, spokesperson, I, I, remember? The hmm? spokesperson, the lady, uh, Kylie, she said, if you take it now, if you take a test now, you're going to have to take a test another day and another day and another one because you can get it anytime. Yeah. Yep. Just because you tested negative, it doesn't mean anything. She even said that. Yeah. Even if you now have it in your system. And so, this what? This is fake news. Oh, it's fake no. news. Oh, I see, yeah. Phil. Please. I want to hear this one. Please. Come on. on a ventilator, Trump. Somebody to serve the president Kentucky Fried Chicken. He can open the box himself. You know? How can this guy have COVID that serves him food? He doesn't. He doesn't have food, Trump. <laughs> Yeah. How they get Uber Eats to the White House. <laughs> I mean, it could very well be this guy went down there without a mask on, said hello, yeah. and blew in the face of all his Republican friends, and they're all going to come down with COVID. That would be nice. Catch you, the president uh, fighting for their life. <laughs> what? We, can't, we couldn't hear you because somebody else was talking, <laughs> Phil. Oh, for a I change. Bet you the president makes his food server wear a mask. No, he didn't. Uh, he didn't wear a mask. In fact, he doesn't like any of the people who work with him to wear masks. Who is that mask man? Yeah. I mean, if the Lone Ranger went to work with him, he'd make him, make him take the mask off. Yeah. 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 No. Um, yeah, yes, Jeff. Plus, his assistant, mm -hmm. Trump, says, I really don't even know who the guy is. Yeah, and yet he serves him food every night. Well, I believe that. I believe he's so self-obsessed, he, he doesn't care about the help. You know? I think he also helps him get dressed. Huh? That's his job, is to get him dressed. Yeah. Can you imagine if you had to lay his clothes out every day? Like, I the, valet. Never <laughs> the valet. Doesn't, don't he's all you got to have Hmm? I mean, that's called a valet that helps you get dressed. And don't no, uh, no, 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 no. This was a this was a steward. Guy, a steward. The, the guy was a steward. Yes. Not a Jeffrey, but a steward. A steward. Yeah, no, that's what they call them. I I, yeah. I was in the navy. I know what they are. Yeah. You know, yeah. as opposed to you, who never served any military time. No, no, no. But I carried a gun. Did you? Huh? Yes, I, I did. Well, yes, I did. As a matter of fact, yes, I yeah. did. Mm -hmm. And uh -huh. as a matter of fact, I, uh, um, I, they, we, when I first went into the Navy, we had to do uh, shooting of firearms at targets, and I was considered to be excellent. Oh, I bet you were. And I was. I was yeah. very good at it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so yeah. you turned off to them after the incident with your friend. Uh, no, that happened a long time earlier. But when I was in the Navy, we were required to do that. So I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't get out of it. Yeah. So I had to muster up. And plus, there was a rifle. It wasn't a handgun. Ah. All right. Yeah. And I, they, they said, "Oh, you're a marksman. You're, you're, you're very good." Yeah, you didn't shoot anybody. No, I shot a target, <laughs> Phil. That's how you become a marksman in the Navy. <laughs> Nobody yeah. died. Then they also made us go into a room with tear gas. Yeah, and then take and then take off our masks. Yeah, I've yeah. done that. That was uh, during the uh, training. They exposed the cops yeah. to uh, yeah. tear gas and uh, le to let you see what it feels like. And I'll never so. forgive the United States government for doing that to me. Anyway, yeah. So, hello, Kevin. How are you? Good. How are you, Alex? Yeah. Are you hoping for uh, our president to come down with COVID so that he can change his tune? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, um, if he gets it, he's in a prime risk group. Yeah, he may not make it. Because he's so fat. Yeah. Uh, no, he's not. 139. 139. 239. <laughs> 239. Yeah, he always thinks he's perfect. He's one Stop. pound under obese. Yeah. It was one pound under obese. Yeah. <laughs> Oh boy, yeah. So you know, he's he's in a prime risk group. So you know, I mean, I don't wish him death, but I think a good case of COVID would be nice. How about a you little know? scare wouldn't hurt nobody? You know, because I mean, after all, he is responsible for the death of what seventy five thousand people in this country yeah. on his watch. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of people. That guy gets you, doesn't it, Phil? But it's on his watch. Oh yeah. yeah. And it's, what kind of watch is that? Timex. 
Like see, you see, uh, immediately when you don't have an answer, you pull a joke. Or what you, oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm hooked up to a you allegedly a pull a joke. Also on uh, Cuomo's watch. that uh, yeah. Sem- yeah, but he he's trying to do something about it, and this president just got his finger up his ass. Yes, yes, Kevin. Have you seen the new uh, campaign commercial? No. Uh, oh, oh, oh the yeah. new Trump commercial? The Trump one that came out today, I think. Yeah, and he's got Cuomo yeah, in it, and he's a, got Newsom. It's a good minute of... Look at what I did. He's using all kinds of uh, stuff from the COVID and how Newsom says, you know, promises made, promises kept. Oh, he's just, he crammed that thing full of stuff. You I know, can't wait to see what Biden's is going to be. Cuomo's <laughs> been nice enough to thank him for things that he has done. Okay. Rather, you know what, what, you know you what, let me finish, so Phil. Much, he used so many clips in that thing that's just such bullshit. Yeah, they, uh, you know, but and they were taken out of context too. Way, way out of context. Well, anytime you cut little pieces and you put them into a minute commercial, that's got to be out of context, you know. As soon as I saw that, I went, "Oh boy, Biden ought to go to Rob Alfano and have him make a commercial." (laughs) 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 Biden commercial would be him sniffing a lot of different little kids' hair. You know, I'd like to see that. Is that all? Is that all the bad stuff you have to say about Biden? That he sniffs hair. That's all you ever come up with. Hey, yeah. he no. sends me pictures. It's scary. Say about that. You know, and and the Me Too movement. Uh, you know, we're a little friendly. You know, where are they in this one? Yeah. You know? By the way, that well, that accuser of his. Trump abuse. I have I have one I have I have one one thing to say about the his accuser Biden's accuser. What yeah. the fuck happened to her? I know she looked great yeah. when she got. <laughs> yes, she yes, did. <laughs> you know, know but then again, I look in the mirror and go, "What the fuck happened to me?" So who am I to talk? Yeah, uh, yeah, you can't, you can't say much, right? Yeah, hey, right. You know, I, you I got did the same thing. In all honesty, I would have abused her too. You know, I mean, it, when she was younger, she was hot. I never abused any woman, Phil. I never thought of abusing and a woman. Just having to go out with you was abuse. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Boy, you think you're on an imaginary roll tonight, don't you? <laughs> yeah. He is. <laughs> this is my favorite lines of all time. Richard Lewis was on with Bobby Slayton on my show in San Francisco, and Bobby was riffing along and everything. And, and Lewis says, Bobby, I, I hate to bother you in the midst of an imaginary roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. So... Hmm. Have, uh, has any uh, Alex? You've heard that Bob Rubin is going to on the 16th is going to have his uh, uh, Netflix special, and it's due in, fa- uh, in part to uh, his friend Patton Oswalt. Yes, Oswald. I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm just putting it out there. When's that supposed to be? Uh, May 16th, Netflix, and I believe one of Oswalt's episodes. Uh, that uh, he he's getting uh, in there. They they melded it into it, so it's not just his special, but his special is featured, introed, and outroed by Patton Oswalt. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. What do you mean? So do you, I don't you know? hear from him anymore. He, uh, he's busy. He's making money, maybe. But who? He who? He's not going to make money off of that. You don't think so? No, not at all. Not at all. When you no. are, haven't you heard some of the some of the uh, things that some comedians have said about Netflix, about how if you want your show on Netflix, fine, that's that's all well and good. But if you're not a big, well-known comic, you're going to give it to them for practically nothing. Well, that's a possibility, but not, uh, practically nothing is more than what he was getting before the thing, and you know, and you and uh, you were one of the guys who donated. Mm-hmm. Uh, to uh, allow him to make that special. Did I? I can't remember. Did I? I think, yeah. I, I, think I did send him some money. Me, Renee, I, maybe a few other people. Yeah. yeah, but I never hear from him anymore. I try to get a hold of him. He never calls back. So. You yeah. need to get a hold of him? He answers me. Well, he doesn't answer me. So. Well. So, no. fuck, so fuck him. Maybe yeah. you got bad breath. No, no, I don't know. I don't know. He, right. uh, yeah, so anyway. 
Uh, where was where were we after you so uh, rudely interrupted us with? Yeah, well, I was just trying to promote. Well, you could have done it at a more at a time when we weren't talking about other stuff. Well, you were talking about comedy and Bobby Slayton and Richard Lewis, so I figured I'd just uh, impart that. Mm-hmm. Okay, All right. thank you so much. We appreciate it. You're very welcome. Yeah, okay. Anyway, um, we are, I think, uh, at a at a real crossroads here. How many here think it's going to get worse in the rest of the country? I know things are getting a little better here in New York, but how many think it's going to, uh, you know, do you think it's going to, it's not going to get worse, Kevin? No, oh, it's going to get Well, then worse. raise your goddamn hand. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. And Tony doesn't raise, raise his hand either. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm teacher. Speechless. Hmm? I think when the weather gets warm, like if it gets better, mm-hmm. I think they're going to flock to the parks and the beaches if they don't close them. And I think it's going to oh, yeah. have that's going to be a telltale effect then, I think. Yeah, that's the biggest problem. You okay. know why I think it's going to get worse? No, I don't want to know why. All right. Fuck you. <laughs> no, why do you think it's going to get worse? Yeah, it will get worse. And I'll tell you why. Well, why? Because, uh, because of course, it's Biden's fault. No, no. <laughs> There, there's more testing. So with more testing, there'll be more positives. That, that's all. Your hope is more testing. Yeah, there's yeah, gonna, you need you know, more testing in Texas. Uh, well, that Texas, who, who needs, you know, the, the, they'll go and do what they do. But uh, there's more testing all over the place. There's, uh, And if you didn't test, you don't know if people have cases. That, that doesn't uh, mean they don't have the cases. No, I'm. I said that there's going to be more. Uh, Phil, uh, that Phil, going to get Phil, worse. you're talking about tests. We're talking about deaths. Oh, no, I was saying the that deaths. The case. death rate has gone up everywhere, but in New York. I said there'd be more cases because there's more testing. No, but forget about the testing, hey, Phil. A death from COVID no, is a death from COVID. Case. Don't you understand? How do you identify the COVID if you don't test them? Because they go to the hospital, they put them on a respirator, and they say, oh, yeah. he died of COVID. That's, that's the people that need a respirator. Well, there are, are, there are a lot of people who die at home that we don't have not been able to register, that we don't know about. The, the, the death rate may be much higher in this country than it is already. And so, therefore, the death rate on, on, on Trump's watch is going to be even larger than it is already. Are you mainlining oxygen so you can speak long enough to go over me like this? L- listen, if uh, I if in order to shut you up, I had to put a respirator down my throat, I'd do it to get enough air yeah. to shut With you up. Like, uh, you know, okay, uh, have have fun. <laughs> what? Time to walk. What is he taking? Another walk? I don't know. He's just having a drink of water. Oh, okay. okay. Delicious. <laughs> What? Last Water. last night you took a walk. Yeah, I had a pee. <laughs> what, oh. what is wrong with you guys? Do you know, I went through this wrong? whole thing where they turned my prostate into a. Toes. It, 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 it turned my prostate into a pin cushion so that it's the size of a baseball, and the pee has a hard time getting out of it. And do I get up and go to the bathroom while the show is on? No. And. That called me six times. So I, I sent it to voicemail five times. Finally, I said, I better answer it. And I went in the other room. Oh. You want me to be on the phone? No. Well, I'll call uh, you. So, somebody, uh, uh, somebody want to call my phone? I can talk to them. Uh, no, don't call me. <laughs> All right. Don't call me. I'm sorry I gave you my number. Uh, no. Anyway. Uh, so, it was written on the bathroom wall. Uh, oh, <laughs> I see. Bonzi. <laughs> okay. Yep. Right. Anyway, um, so I, you know, I mean, I, I just, uh, you know, I just think that uh, that Trump should take a little more responsibility for what's gone on. Instead, we got to see Jared get out there and say, "We've been doing a great job. Yes, we have." <laughs> you, you, you. Boy, when, 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 when boy, it, it's just gotten ridiculous. Oh, and I wonder. I wonder if he gets if he comes down with COVID, what happens uh-huh. to Melania? Oh well, she doesn't have a chance of getting it. So anyway, <laughs> sleep in the Lincoln. Uh-huh. I'll let you think about that one for a while, folks. Does she sleep in the Lincoln bedroom? 
She sleeps in a <laughs> lot of bedrooms, my friend. Because <laughs> a woman that age is still horny, and she ain't getting any from that fat fuck. Yeah. No, he's been pretty active over uh, the last, you know, years yeah. before. No, in the past. Yeah. Not recently. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like us. <laughs> I have an excuse. And so do you, as a matter of fact. I know. You know what would be funny, Alex? If Barack Obama separated from Michelle Obama and sought to date Melania. <laughs> that would drive me crazy. <laughs> Yeah, uh, he wouldn't he because mo- because Michelle would kill him. Enough. You know. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't have enough money. Hmm. Who doesn't, doesn't have enough money? Doesn't have enough money. I think he's what worth 120 million. I don't know. I I think Obama's probably getting wealthier than that. He's got a lot of TV deals. She her book did amazingly well. I think. I don't, has his book come out yet? I'm trying to remember. I don't think so. I think his book is still waiting to come out. Uh, and and they, that's the way they wind up making a lot of money. You know? Yeah. But hell, if Kylie Jenner can be a billionaire, anybody can be a billionaire, okay? You see that tush? That's a that's billion-dollar tush. Yeah, well, she, you know. How do they get tushes like that? All, all of those uh, Kardashians and Jenners. And... Surgery. Surgery. Yeah. Surgery, yeah. Uh, Botox. Although I, don't, I, think, I think Kim came by hers naturally. Yeah. Did you ever see the porno tape of her and Ray J? I think it was. No. Yeah. Uh, and, and and they're having sex, and he's he's having sex with her from the rear, and you can't see anything because <laughs> wow. just everything's being engulfed by this giant, massive. Butt. So you got to tie a two by forty grass, so you'll fall in and drown. Yep. 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 <laughs> yep. But uh, anyway, so. I wonder. I wonder how the. I wonder how the Kardashians. I guess their wealth's probably doing okay. But you know, I mean, they, 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 all, all the businesses they were in. You know, I'll tell you who was in a, in business, and they say is in real trouble now. Disney. Yeah. Because it turns out, when you think about it, all of Disney's holdings are theme parks, movies, all the things. Very few things that are accessible. Uh, anywhere else but going out to them. So uh, they opened their channel up just in chi- just in time. They, yeah, and it's it's doing okay. It's doing all right, but the rest of the business, they're going to be down something like 40% this year. Yeah. They say. Uh, they just opened up their theme park, was it in Japan? Reopened uh, it. No, in, in, uh, in uh, Shanghai. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they reopened it. Uh, yeah, I... I don't know that I'd want to go to a place with all of that people. I, you know, I went to the one in Orlando, uh, uh, Animal Kingdom or something, Disney, and there were so many people there. It's called it Disney like, World. Oh. Yes, go ahead. And and they these people are, uh, the kids are crying. Mm-hmm. The parents are upset. Why would anybody want to go to one of those things? It, it's got to be torture, you know. Yeah, what? What? Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> it was fun for us. I, I, I had a good, I'll tell you, I had a good time. I, I was trying to convince Marjorie to go to Disney World just just for the hell of it, and she won't go. I don't want to go there. She didn't want to go yeah. to Vegas either. Yeah, I, I don't said, blame. look, no, uh, Vegas for two days is okay. I used to have to go down there and spend five days working a con- working conventions, uh, mm. but I picked up a lot of money with those blowjobs. Uh, but no, but working the conventions, uh, when I, uh, electronic convention and yeah. uh, five days, you, after five days, you want to blow your brains out. Is yeah. that that CTS? Uh, is that that convention? Uh, uh the electronic one? You mean, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, CBS? No, no, the, not the, uh, it's CS, uh, CS. Uh, yeah. It's the name of that electronic convention. The I Consumer Electronics yeah. Show, Phil. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, I, you know, I see the stuff that comes out afterwards. I, I went there every year for like five or six years straight. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's... spending more than two days in that town will just drive you up a wall. But, I mean, Disney World uh, wasn't, uh, wasn't bad. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, you know, there's that tram that goes from one part of Disneyland to the It's a Small World After All. Is that Pavilion? Anaheim you're talking about? No, this is in uh, Disney World. Oh. I actually got a blowjob on that. <laughs> All right, ruin it for the rest of us. 
Huh? Many? My kids Many? were on that ride. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason we did is because it was that time of the year where there were it was very small, a very low attendance rate at Disney World that a time of the year that we went. And um, in fact, there was so low attendance that when we did went on the It's a Small World after all, you know how you go from one segment to another to another. Mm -hmm. We went to one of the segments, and all the little dolls that they have, all the animatronic dolls, were playing cards with each other. They were just so <laughs> nobody was paying enough attention to them. So, um, but what it was, I had a friend, Billy J. This is a true story. That he went down to Disney World. They decided, oh, let's go on the It's a Small World After All ride, okay? So what you do is you go through this thing, and it's kind of like you're in a boat or whatever, if yeah. I remember correctly. Right. And then as you turn, there are the kids from Holland, and you turn somewhere else, and there's a very racist African <laughs> pavilion in, in It's a Small World After All, where they're going, booga, 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 you know. Uh, I, went, she, I looked at it, and I went, this is awfully racist. But anyway, he told me the story about how he went on it, and it broke down. Oh. And he was stuck in one place for oh, about God. 45 minutes. Oh. He said, I never want to hear that goddamn song again. <laughs> oh, that's because, torture. I've been stuck for about five minutes. That's because torture. it's on a loop, and the loop kind of stops, so then when you do the turnaround to the next corner, that loop is picks up and it was da 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 over and over and over and over and oh same language because he was stuck. Yeah, exactly. He said it it was like it was like dripping water on his head. It was became torture after a while. It is. It is you know ride I like? The teacups, but they're a little scary. You know, there are only rap. little kids on that. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I yeah. like beat-ups. Yeah. <laughs> My kid would want to go on that ride like two or three times. I'd no. That's it. Teacups. Uh, teacups. The teacups? It just yeah. broke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, the small world one. Oh, the small world one. Oh, that. Yeah, I, I could only go on that twice. I said, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. No mas. Universal but. Studios is pretty good. Universal? Like, yeah. So we go. We when we go to L.A., we'll go to Universal. They have some good rides, the movie rides. They like all the superhero stuff, and they have one. It's the Garden of the Galaxies, and they, it's like a huge tower. And so basically, you're in like the shaft, the elevator shaft, and all of a sudden it just goes up and it stops at one. Wait a minute, level Guardian. Wait, 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 hold on a second. Guardians of the Galaxy is Marvel, so that would be in Disney World. <laughs> that would be in Disneyland. No, no, because no, because Universal doesn't own that. Oh, really? Maybe I'm getting confused. That. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, so they take you to one, and you're at one level. And mm -hmm. They have you know all this all this stuff going on, and then they mm -hmm. drop you to like three or four stories down. They take you all the way back up to the top, and there's this nice view out there, and you sort of relax. Yeah. For me, going down is the drop. Going up is fun, but coming down, and they drop you like five stories just straight in your stomach. Well, I don't. I just don't like. I don't. I don't like um, um, rides that scare the crap out of me. You know, I don't need I, that. Hello there, Bree. By I, the way, thank you. Yeah. Roll up. Yeah. Um, um, uh, I. I. I don't like rides that scare me. I, I. I'm terrorized enough just by living. You know, so I don't need to be terrorized by some ride. Do you Can ever go to? Do you go to, ever go? Ever go to Disney World, Jeff? Turn on your, your, uh, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, we can... Yes, uh -oh. I, I went in California, I think, when I was like a teenager or something like uh, that. Yeah, that's Disneyland, yeah. Yeah, and then I took my kids, my two oldest kids, to Florida. Yeah, that's Disney World. Yeah. My was, kids. Okay. But the one that I always remember is in Brooklyn. Which was not them; it was somebody else. In and Brooklyn, it used to be pretty wild. Bronx. Are no, you? not Bronx. Oh, there was. We're, we're, there was a, Fair. There, the, oh, you mean the, the '64 World's Fair? No, 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 that, no, that was in Flushing. That was in Flushing. Oh. No, it's in Brooklyn, and they had this stuff that was, I think, it was there from the '30s. Coney Island. 
Yeah. Was it Freedom Island. something? Coney Island. Coney Island. Yeah. yeah. I I thought it was it was totally different, and it was a little scary for, yeah. for most people, and uh, it was not for young kids. Yeah. As By the way, I just no, I just noticed something about Bree. Bree, in in this whole lockdown, you've grown a beard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it may be going today. We'll see. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't shaved in a in a week now. Uh, you know why? You know. Ask yeah. Ask Jeff. Jeff hasn't shaved in no Alex what was that oh, part of your of show you the host you got to be looking good you got to be in looking San good Francisco. in the hot self yeah what what did you say in San Francisco they used to have something over on the beach uh that closed down maybe a year or two before i moved here uh it was uh well, the not pl the playland at the beach playland at the playland, beach playland yeah yeah i'd never uh been there when it was open and but, they had uh, laughing lena yeah oh yeah remember laughing lena Oh yeah. Explain she's to them the what laughing lady, lady in the town. Huh? What? She was a creepy lady. She was in the fun house. And she was in yeah. the window of the fun house laughing. Ha 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 big fat. She's over at Pier 39 now, I think. Oh really? Because yeah. I know they yeah. they kept her and somebody bought her and put her somewhere. You know. Yeah, she's at Pier 39 now. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there's a there's one place right on the pier near Pier 39, and uh -huh. it's all it's a warehouse and it's Full of all old machines, and you can go in there and you can find all these really old, old. Yeah, yeah, machines. they're all a quarter or something, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, they cool. used to have them out by uh, the Cliff House. Yeah, yeah. These, uh, this is, yeah, either Pier Thirty Nine or Fisherman's Wharf, or, or in between the two is where they have that. When I was yeah. a kid, my parents took me to Montreal to Expo Sixty Seven, and. Uh, you know, I I had never. You know, I thought that was pretty neat. Yeah, you know, the, they had the monorail. They had uh, other stuff. And you know, in 1967, that was pretty advanced stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, Anybody they, else go to Expo? Well, no. They had the Pan American Exposition in San Francisco in 1939. Oh, what was, was that? The, the World's Fair in 39 that was on Treasure Island, or was it a Pan American uh, Exposition? Well, it was Pan American, but I thought it was 1950. No, no, wait a minute. No, the Pan American Exposition was down where the marina is. The marina was built. That uh, landfill yes. was built for that. But the Pan World's Pan Fair, Pan the World's Fair was in 1939 at uh, on Treasure Island. Yeah, the Palace of Fine Arts was built for the exposition. That's correct. You are correct. And then it's been rebuilt, you know. Yeah, because beautiful. it was all it was all built out of plaster of Paris. It wasn't meant to last. And it started right. falling apart in about nineteen, I think forty nine, fifty. I remember they started rebuilding it and putting a new facade on it so that it wouldn't so it would last forever. So. If any of you guys from other parts of the world Google the Palace of Fine Arts in San Francisco, it is just a magnificent uh, place. No, it's and, not. Oh, well, and it, it is the worst piece of art I've ever seen in oh, my yeah. life. Pond, to begin with, a lot of the uh, opera singers and uh, symphony people go down into the bellows of that thing and practice. Oh, really? really? Inside? Yeah. You have, once in a while, you can oh, walk by. Oh, there you mean? Oh, you mean it, under the dome? No, down below. Oh, under the underground? And Under, yeah, underneath it, in the I guess they got rooms and stuff down there, places you can go down there because the acoustics. Because there is a there's a place in the dome where you can stand. They have a little marker, and you can stand there and yeah. clap, and it just reverberates. Yeah, yeah and they probably go in there too. But I've heard it where you don't see anybody, but you can hear like an opera singer singing well, down there and uh, tuning up and or a violin or something like that. Well, I I, I, live, I lived I lived a, a block away from there. Uh, and uh, e every New Year's, I would hold my Alex Bennett show at the Palace of Fine Arts in their auditorium there. So I only had to work a yeah. walk. Well, how did I put it? I only had to walk one block to make ten grand. So <laughs> I, I you, you know, <laughs> I thought it was pretty terrific. Uh, but uh, no, it is. If you look at it, it's the worst piece of art ever created. Oh, uh, I think it's beautiful. Uh, oh, really? Take a yeah. look up at the very top. There are these women. N who are nude, but they're uh, the, all uh, they're all facing inward, like they're throwing up into the uh, into the thing. I mean, it's just bad, bad. They, it's, they're like gargoyles or uh, or grotesques. No, uh, no, they're they're women. 
literally women. And I went, well, you know, maybe they'll be on the outside, kind of like this. But no, they're leaning forward inside like they're throwing yeah. up into the, into, into the Palace of Fine Arts. Yeah. Yeah. What's inside? N nothing. No. Well, I know that there's nothing. It used to be exploratory. It's a bad it? piece of art, but it's, uh, it's kitsch. It's what I call yeah. kitsch. You know, uh, I love looking at it. Huh? Yeah. Uh, good for you. So, you would. You like bad art. Yes. Uh, yes, Jeff. So, Phil, you were mentioning uh, going to uh, to uh, Canada. Yeah, Expo. Yeah. To, to Expo. So uh, I went there and the Expo was not there at the time. But we wanted to Pam and I went and I don't know. We figured we'd spend a weekend there. It was just nothing to do. We get off the airplane there. And all of a sudden, this cop comes over, and he says, all right, the two of you, you go inside. What the hell's going on? They asked us questions for like two and a half hours. Really? Yep. This is Montreal. Montreal. Oh, the... Had no idea what we did or what we didn't do or why. And it just went on for, for two hours at least. And then finally, they kind of said, "All right, it's over." Did they do it in English at least? Yes, you know, they, they speak French there. Yeah. Yes, they they can speak both usually. Yeah. Somebody tipped you off as a drug runner or something. <laughs> I don't know what the hell it was. Yeah. No, it's, uh, yeah. Well, Expo '67 was pretty neat for a 13-year-old, you know. Yeah, I can yeah, somebody wrote here, Expo 67 was a Montreal triumph. Actually, it's pronounced Montreal. Yeah. Montreal, yeah. Uh -huh. Montreal, yeah. yeah. Montreal, yeah. Huh. I, I, went, I went there with a pinched nerve once. Yeah. I went to the, com they have a comedy festival there every year, the Just for Laughs Festival. Mm -hmm. And I went to do my show from there. And just before I left, I, I, I literally... Pinched a nerve or pulled it, and and I could, I couldn't sit up straight without it hurting. I couldn't lie down, so I went and I got some, some work done on it, but it wasn't enough. So throughout the entire time I was in Montreal, I did my show in the morning. I went back to the hotel, took a couple of really heavy painkillers, and slept through the whole my whole time in Montreal. Yeah. And and I I remember once I can't remember who it was. Um, I, it was a comedian that I used to have on my show regularly, and he said, so when I did your show in Montreal, I said, you were on that show? <laughs> I couldn't remember anybody who was there. I mean, it was just, it was horrible. I never had such bad pain in my life. Well, Charlie's been quiet. Charlie, you got anything to say about the uh, events of the day? Wait a minute, is he there? <laughs> Charlie? Charlie? Is he frozen? He's moving. Is he's he moving? There. Oh, I'm talking. You know, I just... No, we couldn't hear you. Hello? Oh, I, I said, no, I, I was just saying that um, I, I hope that the Trump gets the coronavirus from his steward. That's all. Me too. The governor was with him today. The, the Texas governor. Your yeah. Texas governor was yeah, with him. Yeah, he should get it too. Hey, well, how about that uh, hair cutter in Texas that uh, got arrested and she wouldn't apologize, and uh, the guy threw her in the slammer? Yeah, yeah and then the governor the got him out. Court, yeah, out. another judge uh, overruled it, I guess. But uh, I think that he was being punitive. You know, why should she have to apologize? She's just trying to make a living and feed her kids. Everybody has and having a, no a, respect for other human beings. No, uh, because you you have a, a choice whether you're going to go get your hair cut by her or not. You don't have to go there. They have a choice to follow the law, too. Yeah, well. And, and also, others, this is what kind of pisses me off about that whole thing is that, you know, they're doing this to kind of keep control of what's going on. And it's like I saw a guy at the grocery store today, and it says all over the front door, you got to wear a mask to be in the store. And this guy walks right in, and he stands there at the deli counter. He ain't got shit on. No gloves, no, no face mask, no nothing. I'm just staring at him going, who the who the heck are you, man? I mean, you know, what makes you better than me? I don't want to wear the mask, but I'm wearing it, and and I don't get it, you know. And I wanted to ask him, and I just kept my mouth shut, and I wanted to say something. I, I go, do you run red lights too? I mean, they tell you to stop at the red lights. 
Somebody, why do you not yeah. stop at red lights? Somebody said he was going to make up somebody. What, what it, what, yeah. I don't understand it. I just Some, don't understand somebody the whole said, so, thing. Somebody said they were going to have T-shirts made up. And when they came up against people who weren't wearing masks, he would hand them this T-shirt to wear that says, I have no respect for other people. Why don't they yeah. just give them a mask? You know. I mean, it, 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 well, I was going to go get one out of my truck and hand it to him, you know, because I got extras. And, I was, you know, it was like, you oh, know what kind of conflict I was going to get into. Kevin, you're hoarding masks. You're worse than the Chinese. You're hoarding masks. You know? You're no, hoarding I got a, bu- a, a lady around the corner. More, they're more, masks. Phil, Just Phil, they're the more than. House. What? Tweet the, white, tweet the White House that you got some masks for 10 million bucks. See yeah. how that goes for you. Yeah. You're yeah. very yeah. likely to become a rich person. <laughs> and, a, and a billion dollar deal on masks with a Chinese. Uh, that he was uh, a beneficiary of. Who? Uh, Who was? Uh, Newsom. I understand that. Newsom. Some no, deal. I heard. I heard. I heard. In fact, that the Trump family has made money out of this whole thing, and they're cronies. God, you and Schiff. You know. Well, uh, you and you and whoever gave you that lousy piece of information. The, <laughs> yeah, the thing know. is, you know, the reason why I don't get so upset about it is because I, I I tend to think that everyone does it. So. I, I don't think that Trump and his family are necessarily different um, in that regard. I, but I, I do think that they they could be doing. They're probably doing a lot more. <laughs> do, you, do you know who got a billion dollars from Trump? One of his closest friends, the guy who runs Holland American Tours or the uh, the uh, the Panama cruise ship line that, that, that has the, the the princess and so on. Uh, it, that's one of his close friends. He got a billion dollars. Wow. Okay. Doesn't, uh, now, no, if, no, if, if that doesn't make you mad, Phil, then you are an idiot. Uh, well, you know, I got 60 grand. <laughs> I didn't even get my check yet. I'm still waiting. Uh, you didn't get your check? Not yet. I was going to show it to you when I get it. I'll did show you pay? It on here, but wait, I didn't get it yet. Did you pay income wait. tax last year? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Tony, they found out about all of your comic book money and they knew <laughs> that you made too much to, to get the check. You know, and Tony's actually a billionaire. You know, he's done what, it on- you, uh, what I'm going to do is when I get the check, I'll show it to you on air because I want to show you his, his signature. I, I, I want to see what it looks like economic impact. I showed you what it looked like, Phil. Oh, well, if you, if you don't if you don't get if you if they just simply deposit it to your account, you don't get a check, so you don't get a signature. But you will get an email from him with his signature on it. Oh, you will. Yeah, right, well, right, Jeff. I got a letter. I got a letter with his signature. Yeah. I'm waiting for it. I ran down to the mail today. How, no how long did it last as toilet paper, uh, Charlie? <laughs> it didn't even last five seconds. Wow. So it isn't worth the paper you wipe it on, huh? No. Where the hell's my check? I, was, I thought maybe today I might get it, but nothing. I went down to the mail like a Marjorie demon. and I got it. Got got uh, like eleven hundred dollars. What the, well, what's I'm this all about? I thought we were supposed to get twenty four hundred dollars. I mean, we we don't deserve it because Marjorie is working. You know, we do have money coming in. She's not out of work. But you know, if if the guy who runs the Panama Cruise Line can get a billion, I think yeah, I could at least on, could get twenty four hundred. You know why is he getting it? Because those poor cruise ships, and they're not even registered in the United States. They're, they're all they're, they're all registered in Panama. There there is a lot of people that work uh, and and make their living around those cruise ships yeah. in all ports in the United States. No, as well. no. Where do those cruise ships go, Phil? They go to uh, Long Beach. They go to... Phil, uh, no. Galveston. Wrong, they, wrong, uh, Phil. Uh, wrong, wrong, Phil. Wrong, wrong, Phil. Wrong. Wrong. Phil, you're wrong. You're wrong. They leave those ports. They go to other ports in other countries, There's like in Panama people. and so on. Uh, most of the ports that make money off of those cruise ships are not in the United States. They leave from the United States. So yeah, you're full of crap, of Phil. Of you're made. wrong. You're wrong. Makes Everybody, things. drink. You're wrong. Well, I just sent you the kindest Los Angeles Times article. When the sun goes down. Uh, Newsom's secretive $1 billion mass deal with Chinese... Uh, 
that sparks bipartisan concerns. Well, because he had to get the mask from somewhere since the government wasn't giving them to him. Yeah. So he bought it from China. Yeah, he'd buy Honeywell. But uh, he, uh, he, I sent you, and I sent everybody the article. You, you well, know, you can don't, see don't tell me, don't send me that crap it. anymore, Phil. I don't read it. You're wasting your time by sending it. Well, it's I. I bring up a topic. You say it doesn't. Well, exist. Well, what I'm saying is, is that yes, he bought them, but everybody else was was jumping over each other and paying the highest dollar to get some of the PPE. Uh, our our governor here was, you know. Everybody was like fighting against everybody else to get uh, get the money they you know to get the equipment they needed, and they were paying some pretty outlandish prices for it. There was a story about one woman who worked for I can't remember what state, maybe it was Colorado or something, and she actually had to drive six hundred miles to some like parking lot to give somebody cash for face masks. Yeah. Oh my God, I mean, that's how bad crazy. it was getting in this bidding war because the United the government didn't say to everybody, okay, look, why don't we start this pool and everybody will take from the pool and whatever because that would take administration. That would take the ability to run a company, which, of course, Trump has no expertise and in, no, as Obama is obvious Biden by his bankruptcies. Obama and Biden in 19, uh, I mean, in 2009, uh, when they had that pandemic, I, was that one SARS? Uh, they depleted all the stocks of respirators and masks and gowns and so forth and didn't restock them. Uh, and that's why we are short uh, today during oh, this. Bullshit. Oh, that's bullshit. Oh, that's such I, bullshit. Look at all. So it took nine years for that to happen? Hey, nine years. nine years for us to find that uh, out that happened. Trump That's didn't, pretty bad inventory control. In office and Trump had three years to replant. Phil, Phil, did you know that the government had a whole ton of, uh, of, of uh, what do you call, respirators that they that didn't, wait a minute, wait a minute, that they didn't use? And if those things aren't turned on at least once a year, they don't work anymore? Am I right about that, Brian? That, wait a minute, listen to Brian. Listen, will you exercise. shut up, Phil? Listen to Brian. Yeah. yeah, they have to cycle them. They have to cycle them and make sure everything's working inside still. And they People, they went like to a them. Generator, at, you have to exercise it. Yeah. Yes. And all of them were broken. Trump should have gone broken. down to New Jersey and turned those things on himself. How dare he not let those things work properly? Watch no, it. he should have kept the he should have kept the group together that's supposed government. to do it, but he disbanded it. Yeah. Wait a minute, that's your efficient government operation, not turning those things on, and you want them to take care of our health care? That's oh. right. It's cut, 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 cut it out. It doesn't need it. Yeah. Well, in two thousand, I agree. We shouldn't have never, Republicans doing they it. They never uh, refilled their stockpiles, and that's why we were. Oh, sitting. I see. I, I yeah. Brian has that's bullshit, Brian, Phil. That, bullshit. That, bullshit. That bullshit. 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 The, the former ambassador said that two thousand sixteen, they did an inventory, and that was their last inventory check, and they said everything was full. I don't believe that because... Well, you don't want to believe it, Phil, but the, you, you, uh, uh, Brian has no reason to lie. You do. I, I don't have a reason to lie. You call me a liar? Yeah. I, I call you in misinformed. You're a just what, you, what do you say, Brian, they actually checked to see if there were enough respirators? Yeah, in yeah that was what I said the other night. That, that former Ambassador Rice, she went... Uh, she told, Rice? She talked about the, the playbook, yeah. That's Obama. Will you, will uh, will you shut up for one second, Phil, and let somebody else talk? Yeah. Obama, who talked in 2014 about this pandemic, right? That's yeah. why they had the playbook. They gave everything to to the current administration, just like Bush gave it to Obama. And they yep. passed that on, and they said they did an inventory check in 2016. Yeah. They were full. They were full and fine. Everything was going good. Okay. Yes, so As Kevin. a matter of fact, they had, a, they had the team that... Bush turned over to Obama was so good, they wanted to outdo the Bush to o the the Bush to Obama uh, transition team. The Obama to Trump wanted to o overdo it to make make it look even better, and they tried to do that, and they think they did, but Trump turned around and said, "Screw all that. We don't need all that," and just trashed it. 
Trump is a businessman, and when he sees something and he sees it's not being used, just like he said, he said it's not being used, they pushed all that stuff aside and closed the departments and let people go, and that's just how he is. No, they, right. they moved it's, them to other... Business. They moved them exactly. to other agencies. What agencies, business, Phil? not government. If you well, say they uh, moved them to other agencies, uh, let me know what agencies mustache. those are. The, the guy with the mustache was... Uh, they got fired uh, by Trump. Uh, Bolton. Uh, Bolton. <laughs> Bolton. What's his name? Bolton. Oh, Bolton. Yeah. Bolton was in charge of that agency. Was that the NSA? Mm -hmm. T what? That before would be the that. NSA. It has nothing to do with the NSA. To the Trump administration, he was his agency was in charge of uh, of that program, and he. Why would they? Bolton. Why would? Why would? Why would they be in charge of that program? That agency was in charge of the program. Why? I don't know why. It's the it's the way it works in the government. And anyway, uh, when I think of anyway. NSA, I think medicine, of course. Well, Bolton said he disbanded that pandemic uh, uh, deal and he put it in he he didn't fund the pandemic deal and he had other ed, uh, agencies within which his ones purview. Phil which huh? ones which ones I don't know well uh, then come up with come up with that and maybe we'll listen to you I'm looking up uh, the last thing uh, uh, I thought it was pre Bolton no, no. Bolton was the one that moved it to these other agencies. He defunded the pandemic one, and and uh, I don't know about that. Do it. Well, just look it up. I'm still looking up. The I know you'll look up, and you'll eventually find it somewhere, even if you have to go to Alex Jones. Drudge, Drudge will have it. Drudge. I'm on yeah. US today with this one. Hey, listen, Drudge today these days doesn't like Trump any longer. Yeah. You know they're not yeah, they're not probably. pals anymore. Is Drudge Natural will News will have it. it. Natural, Natural News will have it. I, I thought Drudge was dead. Somebody else took Greatest over. Greatest presidency mm -hmm. in the right. history. Uh, of the yeah, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Drudge is dead. Somebody else took it over, Phil. Yeah, right. Are you thinking well, of Breitbart? Yeah, I must be thinking Yeah, of okay. Damn. Boy, Phil. Go. And we have to trust you on all this other stuff? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah it's all them. They did it. They did it. Ask Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alex Jones. Yeah, rah, rah, rah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I'm oh, gonna I'm gonna eat my neighbors. Did you see that thing where he said he was gonna eat his neighbors and feed them to his kids? Because they were if they were starving. Yeah. yeah. He's really terrific. He's the best. I like him. He's funny. He's very funny. Oh boy. Uh, Phil Phil Phil's gonna find he's gonna find it somewhere. I'm like he, looking at the stockpile stuff. Did you see that the nurse, the president of the nurses association or whatever? Yeah. When they were talking about the sporadic Shortages of PPE, yeah. and in terms Trump of corrected oh, her. Oh, oh, there are no sporadic. And he brought her to talk to him about the situation. Uh, the only thing I didn't like is that the, the guy is uh, who's on at eleven o'clock on uh, on MSNBC though was. She said, "Well, he was also he was very nice, and he he listened to what we had to say." And she said, "But but didn't weren't you bothered by that?" He kept trying to get her to say something negative about Trump, and she wouldn't. But the only reason she was there is because she was pro-Trump. Oh. They knew she wouldn't be any trouble. Anyway, guess what? Thank God it's the theme song. No. Uh, <laughs> hey, you've all been good tonight, except for Phil. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll have to uh, take it out of his pay. I do my best to be good. Yeah, yeah, you try. I, I know want to sleep, Phil. No messaging, hey, please. Thanks to Brian once again, Phil. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Good having you here. Um, uh, uh, Tony, terrific. Jeff, good to hear from you tonight. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, Kevin, you're always a pleasure. And, of course, uh, our old friend uh, from uh, Malaysia. Yes, he's from Malaysia, folks. That's Bree. He's calling us all the way from the other side of the world. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Why don't you uh, kind of all give a, a big wave goodbye, and I will give a big wave goodbye as well, okay? And then that's it. That's our uh, citizen panel for tonight. Uh, they, uh, they. Let me just uh, turn everything off here. Uh, uh, but uh, 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 anyway... Uh, Jack Bishop is next over most of this same GabNet. Uh, he will be here uh, to uh, treat you uh, to uh, some more conversation with citizen panels and the like. 
So why not uh, give him a call? He's up next over most of this same gab net. I'll see you again. Uh, you know when? I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, at 1030, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>